Take this. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for more than 40 years. Today, I'm gonna test some kitchen gadgets made in Japan and see if I can find a way to improve them. Make one side a lot smaller. Come up with like little tiny spoons. Let's make that wheel a little bit bigger. These are the products I am going to test. Rice roll shaker, a watt of chino, grape peeler, gyoza maker, Carrara wash. Rice. Roll shaker. Its purpose in life is to make a sushi roll with just a couple of shakes of the wrist. Today we'll be making a salmon and cucumber roll, one of my favorites. Let's see how effective it is. Let's uh, put in some rice, and I'm not sure how much to put in, but I'm gonna put in what I think is gonna be a reasonable amount. And let's lay in a salmon and the cucumber. I think I'll put a little bit of rice on top. I have some nori that is cut to size. So I'm gonna feed it into the slot. Now in theory, I'm gonna shake this and the nori is gonna wrap itself around and create a roll. Let's see if that magic happens. I might say the magic didn't quite happen yet. Try this, this time I'm gonna hold it vertically. Salmon is closer to the middle. At least it has some rice wrapped around it. Okay, let's try the nori. Again, I'm gonna feed it in as far as it wants to go. And it is, it rolled itself in. So I didn't know what to expect. It seems a little magical that it would just uh, wrap itself into a cylinder by just shaking it. Is it the tightest sushi roll? Maybe not, but it definitely worked itself into a sushi roll. So let's compare that to the centuries old way of rolling sushi. The end result seems a bit tighter packed. The shaker didn't involve nearly as much technique to understand how to use it. Because of that, it had some advantages, although it was a pretty loosely created sushi roll. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five for the sushi roll shaker, I would give it a four. I thought it was rather loose sushi roll, but it did work and it worked almost the first time. I think trying this left-handed or right-handed, it's not gonna make a big difference. There's just this ball that you need to hold on to, this round object. It's not gonna slip in the left hand or right hand, so I don't think I'll learn anything by using this left-handed. For usability, I would also give it a four out of five. It took a little bit of practice, though it takes less practice than rolling sushi by hand. Let's talk about a redesign. And I think this part of it is kind of okay. Holding it like this, I would at least try to experiment with elongating the handle to see if making it longer is gonna be any more effective at giving it some uh, agitation up here to get it to roll better. The other thing is the slot is a little fussy. The nori is not necessarily perfectly flat. What I would do though is I would make this a little more generous and funnel-like so it's a little easier to feed the nori in. Aside from that, this is such a simple object. I'm not sure what other improvements I would suggest. For a buy rating for the rice roll shaker, I would give it a four out of five. I would think it's worth it just for the experimentation, you would probably have some fun trying it out. So it looks like there may be a lot of rice rolling in my future. I'm never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you down. A water chino designed to foam up milk so you can become a sculptor with your morning latte. In front of me are all the makings for a 3D latte with soy milk. As far as I can tell, the soy milk needs to go in first. I am going to place this in. I'm gonna place this in. Okay, so this needs to be up because there is a tab here. We should be foaming. So let's give it a couple of minutes because uh, it's not looking like there's a whole lot of foam going on here. Okay, we're at the three minute mark and I have soy milk. Let's see if that liquid part runs out if I have any foam left at all. I've got some very drippy foam that I don't think is gonna hold itself together. 
No, it's just not stiff enough to, uh, to make anything recognizable. And I've actually just ran out of foam. Well, that's not what I expected. He doesn't look that happy, but neither am I. I refuse to admit defeat. No espresso for me this morning. This is more depresso. Well, the Awadachino was a bust, but let's see how we do with an electric frother. Let's see what I do get. It's thicker than the Awadachino. I was hoping to go for a bear. I think I got a little piggy thing going on in the cup here. This little piggy tastes fine. Can't really say I'm pleased, but there's some level of success. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, the Awadachino gets zero, it didn't do anything. So it doesn't even deserve a one. Yikes. Normally at this point, I would try to use this left-handed, but it's gonna fail left-handed, right-handed. It doesn't really matter. On a one to five scale for usability, it doesn't even deserve a one. This would be a really good example of how not to make something usable. It just was not easy to turn it on. It wasn't easy to assemble. Uh, it wasn't easy to align the little tab to turn the switch on. It wasn't easy to spin the on switch. Just there was really nothing about it that screams out usability. Let's talk about a redesign, and this one's tough. I don't have any instant solutions on how to make this work. I have seen foaming devices that would be simply a cylinder with a screen like hand pump. It's got a base like that, milk up to here, and you start pumping and this starts creating some foam. Now, could this turn into something that you can make artwork with? First of all, you'd have to foam this up so it's thick enough so you can make a three-dimensional shape. And maybe what I would suggest is using a device like this, but creating some sort of spoon-like tools, which would have various shapes. Figure out how people are sculpting clay, look at what those shapes are like, and I would replicate those in a set that would come along with this foamer. It's almost two different things. These little devices to make the shapes and to make you know, like cute little bears or frogs or pigs separate from the fact that you also have a foamer that will work that doesn't require making artwork. So in terms of a buy rating, I would give the Awadachino a five out of five. Oh wait, not a five, I mean zero. Sorry Awadachino, I expected really cute little things from you. I got nothing. Grape peeler. In front of me is a grape peeler whose purpose in life is to allow you to peel grapes. So I've got a bowl here of Kaioho grapes. They are traditionally served in Japan, peeled as a dessert. Grape number one, they are really tiny. Let's see if I just go at it. So I'm going to insert twist, which is the way I think I'm supposed to be doing it. And I've got the inside of a grape in two halves. Let's do a couple more. First impression is that these, this wire part seems larger than it should be. Let's see if I come around the round edge, if I can extract a whole grape on the inside, and that did work. I do have a peeled grape. I feel successful. It's faster to eat than it is to peel. So these grapes have nutrients in the skin as well as in the flesh part, and I'm just bringing that up. I am raising awareness. Let's try it this way. Perfectly fine. Let's see how the grape peeler compares to using these grape peelers. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give it a, let's give it a three and a half. I think there could be some improvements and it is rather time consuming. Maybe uh, there are ways to speed things up. I'm not gonna try this left-handed because it's not a whole lot of force to this. You've gotta hold the grape and the tool at the same time. I think there are some things that could be improved a bit, but I don't think I'm gonna learn that much from trying this with my non-dominant hand. So final rating, two out of five. Uh, I think there has a long way to go in terms of usability. I think there could be some significant improvements. Okay, let's think about a redesign. I would start with actually thinking about the wire part. This seemed large to me for the tiny grapes. What is curious to me is that these are not that different and grapes vary a lot more than these shapes. So I would probably make one side a lot smaller and the other side somewhat bigger. The other thing I would do is think about the shape of this. This would be round. This would be round but bigger. This would be round 
And the reason you want to do that is because you want to be able to spin this. Maybe a slight oval would help. So I would simplify the shape. And then, as mentioned, make one wire rather large and pointy, and the other one go a little smaller so that we're not breaking the grape. I think that would be it. If you really want to peel your grapes, I think there are some improvements that could be made to this grape peeler. So in terms of a buy rating, I would give it a four out of five because I don't know what the alternatives are. Peeling by hand didn't quite do it. Gyoza maker. This is designed to make filling a gyoza an absolute delight. Just look how fun this looks. It's got all these parts, it's got gears, it's got cranks, it's got things going on. I am overly excited to get into this. Let's see how effective it is. So I am going to follow these Japanese instructions, put this in place. I'm gonna use this as uh, what I think is the target for filling. I've got a mixture of pork and scallions in here. I think maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not sure. Oh, let me close the top. Crank, think positive. I may have overfilled it. Whoa, it's using out. Whoa, where did it go? Hey, here we go. If you're gonna make yozas at home, this could be the way to do it. And I am still having fun. Let's do another one. Place the dumpling wrapper on the round side. Wet the outside. Try very little filling this time. I am learning that a little bit of filling goes a long way. Close the cover, drawer is in place. This is coming around. I am not oozing out. That hopefully was a good amount of filling. And I feel so successful. I think I have perfected the technique. Okay, let's cook up this dumpling order. These are looking good enough to eat, so let's do that. Success tastes like pork and scallions. So I am feeling pretty good about this. I thought it was easy to do. They sealed up pretty well. Nothing fell apart as I was cooking them up. So I'm feeling like I would not only want to use this, but I think I would want to use it again and again and again. Let's see how the dumpling maker compares with filling a gyoza by hand. Okay, so these are not looking that bad. Actually, I may actually prefer them because they're a little uh, less even and they have a little more of a character to them. Uh, but I'd say either way, it's successful and it's not that difficult to do it by hand. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the dumpling maker a five out of five. I thought the output was pretty good. Dumplings look pretty perfect. It took me maybe four or five or six to get the technique down. There's not a lot of physical power or dexterity that goes into this. I will say that it would make sense to be able to flip these and let's see if that's possible. Yeah, flipping this lefty to righty is not what I expected. For some reason, these shafts are different dimensions and I'm not gonna be able to flip them to lefty. Okay, I could have some partial success here. Okay, not sure what I did differently there, but they seem to have clicked together a little more uh, securely. And if we're gonna do this lefty, no problem. It just means it's going to open to the opposite side. Not a real big deal, but it would have been so easy to make this lefty or righty. Usability wise, let's give it a two out of five. The other thing I was really unsure about is this piece, where the top looks like the bottom, and this, this just shape of this just looks really confusing. It's not intuitive at all. So let's talk about a redesign. I think this is a lot of plastic. The part that's really gonna be usable are these two cylinders. So I'm wondering in rethinking this whole thing, if there is a way just to limit it to these two pieces. It probably would be some means of stabilizing it. Maybe that would mean just a basic rack that it would sit on. Uh, no bottom tray, the dumpling wrapper will sit on top like this. Dumpling goes in here, it'll still need a crank or a wheel. I'm not sure it needs a crank, it may just want a knob that you spin. So what we have is cylinder, and here's a wheel that you crank. So we do want these shapes to mesh together. I don't even uh, see why they have to be different shafts. That way you don't have to think about which one is on the left, which one's on the right. I think in this case, there's lots of room for improvement with the same level of effectiveness. So in terms of a buy rating, in a way it's a little more fun to make it by hand. I had a sense that this would be better for a group activity, sit around the table, you know, get a couple of people to help you make these. But I'm backing off from that. I think it's just too much plastic to make it worthwhile. I would say 
No, I don't think I would recommend this to anyone. So, buy rating on a one to five scale, one. Carrara wash. In front of me, this simple looking device is the Carraro dishwasher. Its purpose in life is to clean a plate with a press of a button. Probably a little more involved than that, but that's what it is purported to do. Okay, I've got some dirty dishes here full of pomegranate molasses. I have a basin of water. I've got my robotic dish cleaner. Step number one is I need to figure out how I'm gonna load the dishes. This part seems to slide. I am going to wet half of the plate. Why half? I'm not sure, I'm just experimenting. I'm gonna slide this in. I'm going to squeeze this to hold the plate, although I'm not sure I'm catching the whole plate. Maybe that's good enough. Whoa, there we go. Hmm, I'm trying every button here to see what they do. I'm not sure the plate's all the way in, but I think it is, because it's bottoming out on this piece. Let's give it another try. Well, here's a hint, don't tilt it. And I would expect that this arm would want to come around the plate. Let's give one more spin here. Okay, well, that was impressive, wasn't it? Let's try a smaller plate. Stand back, I think my arms are gonna come up and grab the plate this time. Gonna press the button. Okay, so here we have it, a perfectly clean plate. Now the big question is, who is gonna clean this? I am a bit at a loss. I'm doing a bit of juggling and especially a lot of wondering. Let's try one more time. Only because, why not? Stick it all back in. Grab that plate, press the button. Yuck, look at this. If only I had a sponge. Let's see how the Carrara washer compares to using a sponge or a brush and some soap. That seemed to go pretty quickly. In terms of rating its effectiveness, I would give it a one out of five. Is that too much? I would give it a zero out of five. I wouldn't even consider this in terms of uh, a rating for being effective. This is just an odd, odd, odd object. In terms of usability, the same thing. You can't really tilt the plate. You've got to hold it uh, horizontally underwater. The plate will fall out. It's not easy to hold. It's really heavy. It just doesn't make any sense in terms of usability, especially when you compare it to a brush. Usability, zero out of five. For a redesign, I do not know where to start. If this came into me as a project and someone asked me to improve this, I would say no way. I don't think this thing needs to exist at all. I think the redesign is gonna be a brush and a sponge, but to rethink this as it is in the next generation, I would just stay away. So I had a good time with some of these devices. I actually thought the Gyoza Maker was kind of fun to use. Sushi Roll Shaker, I felt at least some level of success first time around. The 3D Latte Art Maker, that one was just a bust and I did try several times. As for the Carrara Washer, I think I'm gonna have nightmares. Uh, 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 uh. That was horrific.